She's awesome. I kind of wanted to hug her after that. <laughs> so I just want to say, me and Evie Perry aren't related. You see the resemblance? <laughs> When I was a young teenager, definitely no older than 15, I recall walking to some sort of corner or grocery store with the girlfriend of a relative. As we began to walk down the street on a hot summer day in Memphis, suddenly all hell broke loose. Someone in nearly every car that passed either honked a horn or yelled something from the windows as they drove by. Said relative's girlfriend was wearing a sexy outfit. Not be, me not being as involved in my feminism as I am now thought, well, that's her fault for wearing an outfit outside. She must have wanted that attention. I'm not sure how old I was when I received my first street haul. <laughs> I've been underweight for a lot of years, so I'm assuming it was later than average. <laughs> but it didn't take me long to realize that what I had on really didn't make a difference from me getting random attention from people I didn't really want in public. I didn't have to wear makeup. I could be wearing sweats. My hair could be completely covered. I could be wearing a heavy coat. So one day, I was on a flight when an older guy who I was sitting next to decided to make conversation. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I suffer from a condition known as resting bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> that means most of the time that saves me from guys saying like, oh, you should smile. But not always. The other thing I usually do is avoid eye contact at all the times. <laughs> so this conversation started innocuously with him telling me about how he was flying in the town to see his daughter, who was away at college. He then began asking me questions about what I would be doing in town and why I was there. The entire time he was man spreading and using his leg to make contact with my leg. <laughs> So granted, we're on like a budget airline, but he's pretty slender. He doesn't need to take up all this space. As the conversation continues, well, mostly him asking me stuff and me replying, <laughs> he starts digging his elbows into my side. And then, in super slow-mo movie motion, he starts putting his hand on my leg and rubbing it. <laughs> so after this, he asks what's part of town that I'll be staying in. I'm kind of vague in my answers, and I'm kind of in shock at this point. Like, is this really happening? The whole time that we've been having this conversation, I've been looking straight ahead and basically being pretty terse. Although I'm in the middle seat, so there's a guy on the other side, but he's oblivious or like listening to music or reading or something, or he doesn't care. So if I was a lot lighter, my face would have been bright red at this point. <laughs> I wanted to scream at the top of my lungs and punch this guy in the face. At the same time, I didn't want to get kicked off an airplane and wind up in jail in a faraway city. <laughs> so at some point, I'm not sure how much time has passed, I get up the nerve to take, my, take his hand and put it back into his personal space. So then, he tucks his knees in a little bit, but not completely. So the rest of the flight, he kind of acts like nothing has happened. The outfit I had on was something that I wore because I was going to be on a flight for two hours. I wanted to be comfortable. So it wasn't short, it wasn't tight, it wasn't low cut. It was like a fully below the knee dress that I could actually feel comfortable going to a church service in. So that's the most recent uh, flagrant violation or street harassment that happened to me in the past few years. Or maybe I should say air harassment. <laughs> But every time that I go out, I am aware that some man might feel like that he's obliged access to my smile, my conversation, or my person. And it's not because I think I am a super fly, fine, hot, bad bitch, even though I am. <laughs> so I don't make eye contact when I'm driving and I'm going to the stoplights. When I could go get gas, I kind of survey my surroundings for potential pitfalls. I don't want to be cornered. If I do walk around smiling, that means I'm giving any random person an invitation, or at least that's the perception. So in the South, we're raised to be polite and say hi to strangers. But women who say hi to men don't know that person will just say hi back and go about their day, or if they'll take that as an invitation or for as flirtation or for a phone number. 
At that point, because of patriarchal society, women have to enforce men of their disinterest by telling them that they already belong to another man. Hi, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but even sometimes that's not enough to be left alone. Sometimes the stranger will reply that he too is in a relationship or worse married. Or if my boyfriend allows me to have friends. <laughs> Going to the grocery store and picking out my six varietals of beer for the week sometimes means a guy will inevitably stare and invite himself to comment on my soon-to-be purchases. Please get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> grocery shopping is sacred. <laughs> Groups of guys are always to be avoided because walking past many times feel like I'm in a meat market and subjecting myself to leers and usually a come on. The guys not realizing that they would probably be more successful in their quest in general if they didn't come across like they've never seen an adult human before. <laughs> <laughs> and not approach women in packs because it's, it feels threatening to us. Because although that works in porn most of the time, <laughs> In real life, women are scared by their very presence and decide that they should get gas or snacks at the next corner store or supermarket. <laughs>